as I mentioned, the realisation has finally landed in Canberra in the lap of everybody that Labor's ambitious ambition to have Australia powered by 82% renewables in just six years is simply a crazy pipe dream. It's never going to happen. It is impossible to reach and it was never going to be achievable. So you have to ask the question, what now? Well, if you're the Treasurer Jim Chalmers, and he did this yesterday, you deliver a speech that should have every Australian taxpayer watching me tonight and every Australian business screaming from the rooftops. Jim Chalmers actually made the point, quote, Australia could not achieve its net zero emissions targets without more robust intervention from government. Well, here we go, folks. And, of course, the usual suspects seized on that comment and started putting their hands out or at least putting them out for vested interests. Chalmers went on to make the point that speeding up the approval process was the key issue to attract more investment in renewables. Now, if you want to read between the lines there and you can see what's coming, federal and state Labor governments around the country are going to seize planning approvals and they'll ride roughshod over local councils and pass laws that allow green energy companies to start carpet bombing farmland with solar panels, wind turbines and, of course, those awful transmission towers to squirt this green power into the grid. We are, and I'm predicting this, we are about to see the biggest battle between Australian farmers and government that we've ever seen. This is going to make the old lock the gate movement look like a kindergarten tea party. Already transmission companies in southwest New South Wales and central Victoria are telling farmers, look, we want to work with you, but if need be, we'll get legal access to your paddocks to whack up turbines and build solar farms. The National Farmers Federation, they've already put together an ad campaign pointing out that feeding people from productive farmland is what they do best. Uh, who would have thought feeding people from farms? After Jim Chalmers' speech, Tony Wood, who's described as an energy expert, urged the Prime Minister, wait for this, to establish a COVID-style national cabinet to oversee the net zero emission transition. Well, we know, we know what the COVID cabinet and how that worked. Now, Premier's locking us all up, sacking unvaccinated workers, that's what we had in the past with COVID, and squirting taxpayers' money around like a fire hose. Now, if that's the model for the Green Revolution, let's hope no one of importance is listening to Mr Wood. Then we had the CEO of a clean energy company, a bloke called Simon Corbell, making this incredible statement. Quote, there are a number of hurdles we need to overcome to attract more green investment, including the reform of environmental protection laws that are delaying projects. So a crowd making money, attracting investment into wind and solar, wants looser environment laws. Can no one see, including the delusional Greens, what this all means? Simply put, wind turbines and solar panels are so great, so important to get us to net zero that we need to throw out protection for things like trees, wildlife and personal property. Isn't this exactly the opposite to what the city-based Greenies have fought so strongly against when it comes to mining, leases or gas extraction? I mean, quote environment fears on fossil fuels, but throw those out, concerns out the window when it comes to renewables. This is climate change madness. Now, as Deputy Liberal Leader Susan Lee said here on Sky last night, Labor is admitting they can't deliver their own energy program. Meanwhile, Australians continue to pay more and more on power bills, while ministers like Chalmers and Chris Bowen run around in increasingly frenzied circles as the realisation lands on the desk that they cannot deliver what they promised.